Appendix 1 The Megalithic Culture of Assam by Christoph von Fugel, Heimendorf, PhD. While megalithic cultures dating back to the Neolithic times still flourish on several islands of the Malayan archipelago, there is only one area on the Asiatic mainland when, where in its full form of a megalithic culture has been preserved up to the present day. This area is the mountain district of Assam, particularly of Naga Hills. These primitive tribes have lived for thousands of years, for thousands of years, comparatively undisturbed by the influence of higher civilizations and ancient customs and forms of ritual long perished in other parts of Asia are still in full practice. The megalithic culture of Naga tribes is recognized as representing a particular ancient form of the megalithic complex so widely spread over southeastern Asia, a form only found in a similar state of development of the small island of Nias, and perhaps on Luzon in the Philippine Islands. It is evident, therefore, that an understanding of the megalithic ritual of the Nagas can throw considerable light on the early forms of Asiatic megalithic culture as a whole. As a whole, during a stay among the Naga tribes in 18, in 1936, in 1937, I was able to collect information on the on the megalithic culture, which supplements to which supplements to some extent the material already published by T. C. Hodgson's by T.C. Hodgson, G.S. Hutton, and J.P. Mills. J.P. Mills. The richest, the richest form of megalithic ritual is found among the Angaminagas. Approaching the villages, one finds that one finds the path lead line for a considerable distance, with great numbers of monoliths of various styles and shapes. There are as well there are usually erected in pairs in groups of four or in double rows. Or two men here are standing side by side, the, the one is almost invariably smaller than the other. Sometimes they are erected over a platform built of smaller stones. But more often the men here rise rarely from the ground. Monoliths are in stone platforms are also found within the villages, standing either in front of, of the houses or on open spaces. The significance of these men here is not always in is identi is not always identical. The Western Angamis erect men here both as monuments to the dead and as memorials of the social accomplishments of the living, rich men put up men here in the course of great phase of merit by which they gain in social prestige and in rank. The, when, even when a man is erected in honor of that man, a phase of merit must be held by his son in the name of the, of the decreased parent. The higher stages of the phase of merit, however, are performed solely and entirely in the, in the honor of the dadal. An essential feature of those fates is the sacrifice of oxen, buffaloes, and mitan, both frontali, both frontalis, which, with their meat and large quantities of rich beer, the giver of the feast entertains the members of his clan or even the whole village. According to the custom of Kohima, a man must give a five preliminary feast before he may erect men here. At fifth phase, a fork post is off, dragged once around the whole village, and finally set up in front of the house of the donor. After this phase, a man may decorate his house with the carved bath rods, known as house horns. At the sixth phase, two men here are put up, one representing the donor, the donor and the other his wife, Bakelos are not al allowed to give this of merit. The stone pulling may be repeated thrice, at first with two stones, then with six, and finally with eight, 
of the stones of with the stones one half is always set up for the man and the and the other and the other half for his wife a man may not until he has walked to the whole series proceed to the two highest fish this highest these highest fish are connected with the building of water tanks and stone cycles for a long time no man is called Hima has been rich enough to afford the two highest fish of merit and in the village of Kono, Konoma, of Konoma several generations have passed, since, have passed since the last water tanks and stone cycles were built. These stone cycles have generally a basis of stone work and are lined with square stone sheets, sometimes painted with such fertility symbols as drinking horns of, or meton heads. It is said that some of these stone cycles, mostly used as dancing places, contain a grave, the graves of men of renown. The Eastern Angamis, in contrast to their Western neighbors, do not erect men hairs for deceased persons, but solely to enhance the prestige of the living. Here, to the wife of the giver of the feast plays an important role in the erection of men and men hairs. When a man has completed all the preliminary fish and has collected enough wealth, he calls together his friends and tells them, I have not become rich to my own efforts, but because the spirits bless me of forefathers drag stones, and I am going to see if I cannot drag stones too. It's believed that a man who has announced his intention of holding a stone dragging fish will have an extra largest harvest. All his clansmen help in carrying in his harvest and in cutting wood. After bringing home the harvest, after bringing home the harvest, the preparation for this for the fish begin. During which time, the the donor and his wife must observe the many tables. His friends, his friends, set about looking for suitable stones, and finally select two stones standing next together. The donor then, touching the stones, says, I want to drag you. You come with me and be friendly. You do not give me trouble and you give me nice dreams. In the following nights, he must have a lucky dream or else new stones have to be found. When all the preparations are completed, the fish begins. On the first day, cattle, cattle and pigs are killed and all the villagers entertained with the meat, the rice and rice meal. On the next day, the men of the village, in the ceremonial dress, drag the two chosen stones on wooden sledges to where the horse have already been dug near a bed. They load the stones to slide slowly into these holes, raising them with cane ropes so that they stand upright. As soon as the men have are reacted, the donor of the fish and his wife sprinkle the blood of a bird on their respective stones pronouncing a formula which is most illuminating as to the meaning behind the raising of men hairs. They, they say, may, me meet, may my meat increase, may, may we, my sex of meat increase, may my crop increase, may my crops increase, may my food not be finished quickly. This establishes the character of the ceremony beyond all doubt as that of the fertility of a fertility ride. Rich men may repeat the stone dragging fish like ten times. Each time, each time it an increasing number of stones, but in case they should wish to give yet more fish, they must begin again at the very bottom of the whole series with the preliminary phase. Among the western Angamis, such a man must lay in a winnowing basket like a newly born child and cut his hair like that of a child. A new bed must be made for him and a new cloth. The idea is evidently that he must be reborn and start a new life in order to commence once more the series of the feast of the merit. Similarly, a Lotanaga, who once, after having completed the full series, to continue to give feast of merit, must enter the Bacchus house, Bacchus hall again, and live there like a boy. The question arises, which the Nagas believe that the ration of men here increases. The fertility of the fields, the valley said, 
to nave emphasis by carving of the stone and art foreign to the Nagas may originally have been connected with this belief. I do not think, however, that the idea of the man here as a phallic symbol is foremost in the mind of the Christian Nagas. Yet, there is the widespread belief that stones should only be set up in Turks and the Kachau Nagas, who read men here combined with dolmens, state clearly that the abide stone is male and the dolmen female. The beneficial influence of the men here on the fertility of the crops seems to lie in their function of establishing connection between the living and the dead rather than in their phallic character, the magical virtue inherit, inherent in a man of exceptional wealth. is believed to emanate from him and to enter the stones he set up dwelling there even after his death and benefiting the whole community by increasing the fertility of all crops. This underlying idea explains also the custom of the Angami Nagas of burying, of burying the dead along, the dead along the paths to the fields in or front, or in front of the houses. The graves consist of low platforms of stone and are often used as resting places. However, uh, however, apart from these tombs, apart from these tombs, store of these tombs, tombstone of these tombs, stone platforms are also erected as cenotaphs. Cenotaphs. Other elements of the megalithic culture of the Angamis are stone sitting places, sometimes consisting of several ascending rows of seats and frequently associated with tanks or springs and great truncated pyramids built of rough stone. Most of these are said to contain the graves of clan ancestors but they are sometimes built poorly in order to erase the prestige of the clan. Path avenues, stop steps, stone steps leading up to the villages and stone fortifications of great stone complete the picture of the most flourishing megalithic culture on the Asiatic mainland. Megalithic monuments are lost erected by the Mao or Maram Nagas and the Lota and Rengma Nagas. And, but it is curious that the neighborhoods to the north and northeast, the Aos and Semas, perform elaborate feasts of merit without setting up stones. They substitute wooden fork posts for the manhags, and their erection is invariably connected with the sacrifice of meat or buffaloes during a tour to the unadministered and partly unexplored area between the Naga Hills district and the Burma frontier I saw similar white posts in the white post in the villages of the Sang Tams, Changs and Jimsu. The significance of this post corresponds to that response to that of the men hicks. This become evident in the eastern Angami village of Iganumi, where I saw instead of men hicks large white wooden posts with the ends of the two fox calf in the semblance of human heads. They are set up with the, the same ceremonies that in other Angami villages accompany the erection of men hicks, and the two heads represent the donor of the fish and his wife. The Aonagas have, have developed the simple fork paws into more elaborate carvings which they set up during the higher stages of their phase of merit. Some of these are carved and painted to represent home buildings of a forget in our art. The owls also set up squat rounds, round posts which are probably very symbols though they never describe them as much. The same forms in stone, hopefully and wise shaped monuments are found in the ruins of the Kachari capital of Timapur. We have no historical monuments concerning, concerning the Kachari culture and the true significance of the monoliths of Dimapur is therefore still obscure. Yet it seems that here, exactly as in certain areas in, of Indonesia, primitive megalithic forms have been taken over and developed by a higher civilization. A peculiar variation of the megalithic complex is to be found among the Konyak Nagas, a tribe that represents the oldest cultural stratum in the Naga Hills. Here only the ships give face of merit and the sacrificial animals 
buffaloes and meat on are tied to fork paws and they're slaughtered. It seems worth noticing that no paws are ever set up for the sacrifice of pigs, though the cognacs value pigs in many ways more highly than cattle. Only a sheep ang, who, see, who has given fees of merit, is considered a great ang. Such fees are extremely expensive, since about 40 mitan have to be killed. A calf post, the top calf in the shape of a hornbill, is held on the front of the ang's house on the day of the setting up the ang and his wife are safely blood hide in the house. A young man carrying the calf was seeing the calf was seeing the name song, singing the same song as they sing when carrying the coffin containing the corpse of an ang. This suggests that the calf was represents the ang who has symbolically to die and therefore hides during the ceremony and to be reborn. No stones are set up during this feast, but many of the sacred ships of the cognacs possess thrones of stones, consisting of a flat sheet on the base of smaller stones. Very large men stand behind some of these thrones, on which only the arms and the sons of safety blood are allowed to sit. The same privilege applies to the big wooden seats in the angst houses. They are cut off of a single piece of wood and have the form of broad bed carvings uh, of humble heads usually turn octave in a row in a row at the broad their ends, similarly carved in the form of humble heads at the ends of the wooden coffins of men of Ang clan. These coffins are then placed on platforms before to carve figures representing the deceased and one of his followers are set up. Stones. Stone cycles are found in front of many men's houses of the cognacs. In the center, this generally stands a man here on which, after successful head hunting weight, the basket containing the head is hung. The reason of such men here is not connected with the fee, with face of merit of face of merit. In most cognac villages, a stone is erected for each head brought in, brought in the tongue and ears being cut off and buried under the stone on three occasions where I was present at this ride. The stone slabs were so small that they could be carried by as few as two men. In the village of Hang Hung Poi, on the other hand, I saw men here taller than a man, which had been erected only a few weeks previously at the beginning in of a head. Such stones are usually set up under a tree in front of the chief's house or on a small hill of a garden with eucalyptus. The cognacs associate the cavitus in a similar way with head hunting trophies, as other nagas associate the eritina, eritina used, as the, used as a head tree by Changs and Calliocinus. Those the stone monuments in the wooden fork post are the most conspicuous elements of megalithic culture. They are by no means the only characteristic features of this complex. So what is spread of southeastern South Asia? It has been mentioned already that the typical phase of merit and the sacrifice of cattle are closely associated with the erection of monoliths. The phase of merit invariably entitled the donor to the special ornaments for his own person and that of his wife as well as for his house. There is among the Tangkul Nagas the belief that men who has given face of merit will have a better fate in the next world and though such an idea is not very pronounced among other types, I believe that it has also placed in the spiritual basis of megalithic culture. Another typical feature of the megalithic complex is the strong symbolism of its art and particularly of the importance of the buffalo or Nitan home motif. This motif, also found, in, also found in many parts of Indonesia, is prevalent among the Nagas, village dogs, house posts and planks, sacrificial white posts and stone seats, are decorated with carved or painted heads of cattle, meat and buffaloes, 
take shock species represented being sometimes doubtful. These carved heads are not merely ornamental, but commemorative of animal sacrifices, and thus their value is not by, is not only aesthetic, but definitely symbolic. I believe that our von Heinegelton is correct in ascribing this symbolical character to the art of the early megalithic culture of Southeast of southeastern Asia as a whole, it is very clearly pronounced in the wood carvings and paintings of the Angaminagas, representing human heads red jug in war, woman's breast, a symbol of fertility, pig's heads, a sign of wealth, and other lucky symbols such as the sun and the moon. The style of both of the carvings and paintings is served and monumental. Simplicity of form, rectilinear, rectilinear contours, and an almost complete lack of ornamentation are uh, their outstanding characteristics. The art of cognac nagas, though also maintained, though also mainly symbolical, is less severe and shows a more a more naturalistic tendency. Carving in the round is much more powerful by them than by the angermis and human figures as well as animals are represented in movement. From a purely aesthetical point of view, cognac carvings stands stand on a far higher level than those of any other Naga tribe. But since the megalithic complex is so much more fully developed among the Agami, Angami Nagas, it seems that they have a massive and conventionalized style is more characteristic of megalithic art than the naturalistic style of the cognacs. The megalithic culture of Assam is not only confined to the Naga Hills. A few hundred miles to the east, we find an overwhelming number of megalithic monuments set up by the Chikashis, a tribe with an Austro-Asiatic language of Mon Khmer, Mon Khmer tribe. The hill near Silong are covered with monoliths. The most common grouping is that of several main hills with a small dome in front. The main hills struck me as being very similar to those of the Nagas, yet they have no connection with face of merit, but serve as resting places for the souls of dead. Of the dead, the houses burn the dead and dispose and the bones of the bones in small cheese, a small stone cheese at the family's burial place. When the clan increases in number, a large bone repository is built, to which the bone of all its members are removed from the individual cheese. Since some clan are widely scattered, the bone has frequently to be carried over considerable distances to the clan repository on these journeys, which are accompanied by many ceremonies, including the sacrifice of cattle. Men here in groups of three of three are erected on the way in order to serve the souls following the bones as landmarks and resting places. On the middle men here is hung the head of a bull. Greek families, in addition, set up huge stone monuments in honor of the decreased ancestors. This consists of an even number of men here and a dome of table stone lying in front. Since the Hasis have a matrilineal organization, they set up these memorials for the clan ancestors and headquarters. The men here are considered as male and represent the maternal uncles, while the dome represents the clan ancestors. In contrast to the Nagas monoliths, many of the Hasi men here are carefully worked with, the, with well rounded tops, rounded tops. While the megaliths of the Nagas are mainly erected in the course of Feast of Merit, it appears that those of the Khasis are intimately associated with the cult of the dead, yet both aspects of megalithic ritual, the gaining of prestige for the living and establishment of connection with the source of the dead are in different degree to be found in both areas. The same ideas seem to lie at the root of the megalithic cultures of Indonesia and thus suggest a unity of the megalithic complex extending from the Nagas, from the Naga and Khasi Hills, over Nias and Sumatra to Flores, Ambon and Seram.